after listening to those very inspiring presentations, I think we are going to have a very interesting round table with the four speakers, four guests we have today with us. I will start introducing the two on my left. Um, Venusha Suralova, Chess in Schools Project Manager from the Czech uh, Chess, Chess Federation. Sorry about <laughs> that. Uh, welcome and uh, thank you very much for coming. Michal Bruba, founder of Bratislava Chess Academy. Thank and you. on my right, Lucas Turley, Secretary General of the International Chess Federation, FIDE, and President of the Wasco Hetman GKS Katowice. Pasko Hetman GKS Katowice, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, and our host, Judith Polgar, thank you for being with us again. First of all, I think I can speak on behalf of the whole international educational chess community by thanking all of you for what you are doing. I mean, this project of cooperation between four countries can really be a model for the rest of the world. Then let's start by a, the, a question that I'm going to ask you, just each of you, please tell us about a lesson you have learned from the last 10 years of implementing chess education programs since the very famous European Union uh, declaration in 2012, more or less. Uh, please, one lesson from each of you. Who wants to, to be the first? <laughs> Look, um, so, uh, chess in school, I think it's uh, present point even for more years than uh, than ten. But of course, this uh, this uh, last ten years are the most uh, the most important. The most schools uh, are joining. I remember the first um, conference in uh, Polish Parliament, where um, where uh, back then President of Polish Chess Federation Tomek Szelitski was telling to Parliament members, like advertising the program, uh, saying that this is not only developing uh, skills, but uh, basically building better society. Mm -hmm. Because this is uh, kind of uh, skills that we need to see um, in the new generation, because they will be working for our, our pensions. Yes, so we we want to develop them as as uh, best uh, as um, as uh, possible. Uh, from last ten years, I think I'll say about this uh, last year that we we have a new project in actually in my city that after the uh, UNICEF conference, some soft um, pr um, skills projects are coming back, and uh, for the first First time we are cooperating with UNICEF. We are cooperating with um, private companies also mm -hmm. who are who are supporting cities uh, is supporting the the project and actually um, we plant. Um, uh, a couple hundred places for for kids and 400 more registered. But together with all the partners, we managed to to um, find a place for them. All the all the equipment, uh, books. Uh, I think it was. Partially um, thanks to um, the visit of Judith in uh, in the city, because many people were were discussing after our panel discussion about chess in education, and it started to be very interesting for um, many people who were not that much connected with chess earlier. For parents, see it as an uh, interesting opportunity for their kids. Mm -hmm. Interesting people from outside chess is always a crucial of course. Uh, goal. Of course, what about Benusha? Uh, for me, it's very difficult to describe the development in the last 10 years because I started to work for chess and schools in Czech Republic in uh, 2018. So I can talk about last five years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I have to say that uh, it's true that uh, many other organizations started to support chess, for, uh, especially cities. So, for example, in Czech Republic, Ostrava also has got its own uh, city uh, project, uh, Chess in Schools, mm -hmm. and uh, the uh, town or city uh, is supporting their schools to have chess and to give education to teachers. So many, many another organizations, not only Federation, uh, Chess Federation, mm -hmm. starts to support chess. Mm. Again, you have support from outside the, te the te chess world itself. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. This is really important in my view. Michal? Actually, uh, our Chess Academy is, uh, op is on, on, a, on a map for, for 10 years. So we started like uh, really from the zero point and 
What I'm happy about uh, Slovakia that uh, uh, many clubs or, or um, our schools are, are inspired by our work and uh, uh, implement chess in schools because they see that it works and kids are happy. So this is uh, my key learning and, and I'm happy that it really works and we can inspire other people to work with, with the kids. And for me personally, uh, what I see as a chess, as a tool, uh, to uh, to not only learn a chess as a game, but uh, improving soft skills of kids, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, like for the future. Well, that will be that should be the the most important goal. Yeah. It? yeah. Judith. Well, we started the the program, the educational method, more than ten years ago. So first of all, I'm very proud of that that we started. Probably many of the people know that I was a professional player and very successful. And when I started to develop the program having chess in education, of course people were looking at me, the teachers for example, that come on, we don't want to do this chess. Mm -hmm. So in the last 10 years we gained incredible success that we, uh, we gave courses also for a lot of uh, more than 4,000 teachers. So what we learned from that, that chess is something that uh, belongs to the classroom and mm. chess is a game which is extremely motivational in every different way and actually what i'm learning also that uh, that uh, in many many different countries you can use it in many different ways mm -hmm. but i think also my uh, uh, my findings is that we are we have so many good examples that communication and communicating it to uh, to out to the outside world, this is one of the most important nowadays, because there are you know it's not enough to do a good job. You have to make it visible to everybody who makes decisions, to the parents, to the school teachers, and so on. So I think we made a huge improvement in Hungary and also as we see in other countries as well. Mm -hmm. Actually, as far as I know, I think you are somehow adapting your course to other countries. Well, we had a little bit, uh, yeah, doing it for several years in China. Uh -huh. They're using it in, of course, the Chinese way because every country has to adopt it. And uh, now I have a new book series also, which we, we structured it in a way that we hope to have it as many languages as possible. Mm -hmm. But the main idea is, is not necessarily my program, but I'm really an ambassador for chess in school in general. So every good uh, program is something I'm supporting a lot. Mm -hmm. Now let's start by the second question by Venusia. Um, what differentiates each of your programs from the others? I mean, it could be the method, the pedagogical tools, the materials, how it is organized, whatever you think is more interesting. Uh, you mean what we offer to schools in Czech Republic? What di what, why your program is different from many others? Uh, I think that uh, the most uh, typical feature for our program is offering, uh, getting how to qualify it for teachers. We offer an uh, online course for teachers and they can achieve uh, the knowledge how to teach and then they can start to teach. And it's very effective because, for example, in last uh, month, in September, uh, approximately 18 or 20 uh, teachers uh, got through this course and got the qualification and they mm -hmm. can start to teach. And I think it's one of the best features in our program. Mm -hmm. Michal? Uh, well, it's, uh, our, our key feature, I would say, is that uh, we try to inspire kids to love the game, uh, firstly, not to push on some results or to, or, or to learn all the combinations or whatever, but inspire to love the game. And afterwards, uh, it's much easier to work with them, also with uh, chess coaches, not only the teachers at the basic level. So this is our approach. Uh, what works for us, and I think that it's it's a it's a way for maybe our country or region. Mm -hmm. I see, Lukas. Uh, you mentioned in the first question that this is very very special cooperation. <laughs> uh, that basically we are doing similar things, mm -hmm. but uh, because of a meeting earlier online, now in person we can exchange uh, good practices. 
and uh, for example we can know what is happening in the Czech Republic as a federation as a as a country uh, from my perspective as a club but also also what is happening in a country Judith is doing uh, all the global global thing and um, and as uh, Michal saying uh, this uh, academy uh, which has different approach so this um, this uh, sharing experience um, experiences is, is uh, very very important Mm, uh, both on approaching on to decision making people and um, and uh, of course how to teach kids um, earlier today uh, Marlena was telling about the, um, the application of technology uh, to um, to chess in uh, chess in schools and we are trying to balance it of course uh, classes with with books uh, interesting um, examples uh, but also to use all the all the power of technology mm. as well with interesting interesting approach not too much of computer of course as well mm -hmm. and do it well, our program uh, is focused very much on metaphors for life and for, uh, for the age of the kids uh -huh. And uh, so this is why we have a very special chess palace, which goes back and forth and merges the chessboard mm -hmm. and the chess palace on the 64 squares. We have very special characters. We give them superpower. So the emotional attachment for the kids are very, very strong. We also add uh, stories, rhymes, and so like every different things, whatever we put in the program, it has to be connected with the others. So basically the kids get into the flow and they just, without realizing it, they improve in every kind of skills. Mm -hmm. Now, a question which I think is very especially interesting for our audience, Vanusha, uh, how can successful models as yours be replicated in other countries? Uh, how our how the, how our course could be replicated, for example, in mm -hmm. Poland. Or adapted. I think yeah. it can be very easy because uh, our structure of the course is very similar to to duplicate, and you just need a few people who are able to record some lectures for teachers. You need some materials uh, about psychology uh, and pedagogic, and uh, then you can put it everything into an online course to uh, set a. Uh, some set of questions for teachers to make a uh, to make a test at the end of the course, and you can do the same as we do. It's very easy. Maybe it's only some things are only for translating to another language. Mm -hmm. Michal, do you think there is something that is easy to do in Slovakia but more difficult in other countries for some reason? Well, I was uh, speaking uh, also yesterday uh, during this V4 summit. Uh, mm -hmm with uh, representative of, of other countries and I think that each country has uh, a, some speciality I would say. Uh, therefore, f from my point of view, it's very important to have a kind of people like full-time people as a m manager who will be uh, doing uh, all the management of, of the chess courses or, or whatever. And, and then uh, these people can connect schools can go to go to kids mm -hmm. but it really depends how to do on each country because each country is is different but maybe kind of model that, that there must be somebody I can call anytime and he can uh, help me uh, that is very important because for example from my experience uh, I'm supporting also teachers also coaches also director of schools or whatever they need so it's it's important to have some person who is responsible for that. Mm -hmm. Lucas, you have mentioned an underlying technology, which of course is very helpful, but what about, for instance, third world countries? How can deal with that? Yes, I had many talks with uh, representatives of, uh, of different countries and they are willing to do to do big projects, mm -hmm. but uh, every journey starts with the first step. So uh, I think it is important to have uh, meetings like this, forums like uh, like um, here we have in, in Budapest. We are still a bit struggling with this mm -hmm. in, in chess. Uh, many other businesses are meeting very, very often. They are discussing how to organize a tournament, how to, how to promote chess in education. And um, 
I think even for smaller countries or countries which are having I don't know one school in in uh, Chesian education, they can get something. And when they are listening to examples from from our countries, uh, and uh, they can listen, maybe they ask ask them some questions. They they can also ask, what was your first step? Yeah, like to me, Homiha says that uh, ten years ago he started. Probably he didn't start with twenty schools uh, the, the very first year. Mm -hmm. It was the the same problem that people are having in different uh, different countries. But also for some federations you mentioned in in Africa, mm -hmm. chess is one of many different many sports. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, football is number number one. Yeah, almost <laughs> always. Football is like uh, a god. <laughs> some country, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so when you are mm, when you want to build a federation. Uh, and you are going to this um, influential people, ministers, um, advertising chess as only a sport, your chances of success uh, are not that high. Mm -hmm. But when you are showing that it, it's both sport but also tool for ed education, you might be very successful. And uh, I had an opportunity to, to talk uh, with some presidents of, of uh, African federations mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they they prioritize chess in education um, very often to to um, trying to get some more funds for for the first team because they, they can get like five five percent more ten percent more but for chess in education they can basically attract uh, many schools in the in the country and make sure that chess is something which is popular in the country and then then we can talk more mm -hmm. and you do you have experience uh, with different not only countries but even continents exporting your method, which are your main conclusions from that experience about how should we do it? Well, we, we are not there yet that we are in too many countries, but I think it's, uh, generally speaking, it's very important for each of us to clear as much as possible our method and our ideas. So it will be very clear to give it to other countries and I think it's not only about making the program itself very good and very clear and graphically also as much as possible to improve. So already decision makers, by looking at it, they say, wow, it's, it's, it's nice. But it's also extremely important to, to give the, the passion and this enthusiasm what we have towards our program, that somehow to transmit the belief that we do believe from our experience, from the decade of experience, mm -hmm. seeing the teacher, seeing the parents, seeing the kids, to collect all these positive feedbacks, that we are able to transmit this, that you should try it, give it a try, because it's just good. <laughs> and actually, mm -hmm. it's pretty cheap also, let's face it. It's, it's not, the, not the something which is unimportant. And uh, I really believe that probably all of us can agree on that, that when we transmit our belief and our program because we love it, we just simply convince the, the teachers, whoever hears it for the first time. I know, Leoncho, that you have the same experience mm -hmm. in many countries yourself, that you're talking to, to completely unknown, uh, for, with people, educators who never heard about chess being in the classroom, and thousands of people, you experience how they react. So I think this is very important, that the emotional part, that mm -hmm. we catch the attention, and we grab the attention, and then they are, wow, this is really magical. Chess being in the classroom, we would never believe it. So simple, right? It's in, like, wow. <laughs> indeed. For instance, when a, a school teacher who is uh, working on maths sees how can use chess as a pedagogical tool to explain a big part of geometry, arithmetics, algebra, automatically realizes that chess can be a very important professional tool for him or for her. And that makes the, the change, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the four of you have a, a solid experience already, so I think it's interesting to ask you about what are the main challenges for educational chess in the next years to come? Mm -hmm. Well, me? Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, if a few months ago, or last year, I had a, a seminar for, uh, for chairman of the schools or headmasters. And it, uh, its name was 
why to teach uh, children chess. And I told them uh, what are the myths about chess. And I think many people think that chess is very complicated, only for gifted children, mm -hmm. it's not for everyone. And uh, I think it's very important to, uh, to explain them that chess is actually a very simple game with a few rules and you can play it and you can gain some, uh, some benefits from it even when you play it on a low level. It's the same like when you learn to, to ride a bike. Nobody or not everyone is able to go around to the France, but everyone who learns a little bit to ride a bike can get some benefits from it. Mm -hmm. And even chess, when you learn chess, you can uh, take some benefits from it, even when you play only on a low level, because it's also important for children. So I think it's very important to fight with the uh, mythos about about chess, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because sometimes people think bad things about chess, which actually don't exist. So we have to destroy these myths. You are absolutely right. I underline every word she said. Thank you, <laughs> Michal. Definitely, I, I must uh, I must agree, and we are struggling also with uh, uh, like overcome this. Uh, this, the teachers are afraid that I don't know to, how to play chess and this is the first step we should somehow overcome but I would like to maybe add uh, what, what Judith said about the promotion of chess uh, from my experience when I was talking to municipalities or directors I used to go there and talk about okay we are doing this, this, this and if these people are, don't know nothing about chess they are okay and nobody calls back but now I use very simple, I just print out like two or three pictures. This is chess tournament, this is how, we, how it looks in a, in a chess class. And I just came, show these three pictures and after one minute everybody wants to talk with you. So maybe simple mm -hmm. trick how to, how to talk with people who don't know nothing about chess. Mm -hmm. So Lucas, be besides destroying uh, wrong taboos, <laughs> what else do you think is a challenge for the near future? Um, one challenge that we had uh, in Poland and, and still we have was uh, that after this um, decision of uh, European Parliament, uh, we had a uh, new educational bill in Poland after a couple of years. And uh, actually we do have chess and programming there as, um, as uh, tools to help uh, education. So, long story short, it is possible to have uh, from next year chess in every school. Mm -hmm. But um, for the ministry, in the, in the very first year when it was discussed, uh, it was something scary. How, the first thing, uh, to organize chess classes, from where we can take so many teachers, uh, so many instructors for these teachers. So when you go to school and say, can we organize football tournament, then they know what is the football tournament. But mm -hmm. for most schools which are not in a pro um, uh, program, mm -hmm. uh, it is something new and maybe let's not do something that we don't know how to, how to proceed mm -hmm. with. So, so we for sure we have to show uh, good examples, uh, especially that when you have new, new legislation, always people are, like one politician are saying it's good, others are saying it's bad. At the very the same days that, that, we, that this legislation was going through, uh, we had a tournament in the Polish uh, parliament for, for very young kids. Uh, and uh, there was a camera, so we were recording um, opinions of politicians. And uh, they were saying, some were saying good uh, legislation, some were saying bad, but all of them were saying chess and programming, perfect. So there is a wheel. But from this wheel to the um, situation when we'll have 90%, 100% of schools in the program in the, uh, in the country, there is still a long way to go and I think it's everyday, everyday work on the level of the, um, of the clubs, cities and of course, uh, of course federations. Mm -hmm. Actually, as we have seen along this uh, Educational Chess Summit, chess and coding are extremely connected so they work together really very well now for judith i have a special approach because i know you like it in the last 25 years the world has changed as much or even more than in, in any other 25 year period in the history of humankind and according to the experts is going to change even faster 
in the next 25 years. But chess develops flexible thinking. Uh, I want to add a little bit to, to the question, mm -hmm. sorry, because I think it's very important that the biggest challenge from my perspective, seeing many, many different countries, including not only us, but Spain, Argentina, Latin America, mm -hmm. different countries, mm -hmm. to find chess in education the right way. Where is it located in education? To clarify it, is it an after-school program? Is it a separate subject? It has to be included in the uh, some uh, transversal uh, way into different subjects. I think it's very important to clarify for everybody that they understand that chess has its place. Maybe it's not only one place, but then we structure it that you have three different kind of, so every institute shouldn't be the question that, well, should I do chess now? No, I have this, this, or this, but one way or another I want to include it. Mm -hmm. So referring to your question, uh, what will happen, right, in 25 years uh, that we need First of all, we need chess in education to have people being resilient, right? Mm. And chess is something uh, can offer a lot for kids, I think, because with chess we know that we have to think ahead, we have to make strategies, we have to be very uh, uh, flexible, we have to rethink, rechange our thoughts, direct, we have to take responsibilities, and, uh, and I think we will need this extremely very, very much. And of course, we shouldn't forget that we're talking about kids right now who are in kindergarten and uh, first grade, that parents have no idea what kind of job the kids will have, right? Mm -hmm. So how a parent can be helped, this is also a huge question to me, how can we help with chess the parents to be convinced or to, to calm them down, not to worry so much that actually, what am I going to teach mm -hmm. to my kids now? Because mm -hmm. I have no, it, that job does not exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the last few years, last one year practically, we experienced mm -hmm. what ChatGPT made to us, right? Yes. And it will come every year, mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. two years. So I think this is also something for me important that people ha uh, should understand that it's not only our belief, but our experience. The chess is something that really can prepare kids for flexible thinking and those mm -hmm. challenges what we need. But actually, I would like to advise also the parents to learn chess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For this reason. <laughs> now, each of you, is, this is a real challenge, have only 45 seconds to answer <laughs> a very difficult issue, which I, in my opinion requires uh, a lot of n nuances. This is a question that comes from, to us from Mexico. Should chess be a compulsory subject or do we run the risk of it being counterproductive? Uh, now I'm talking about Czech Republic. So at this moment, uh, Czech uh, educational system has got its own inner big troubles with um, many things. So I think that in, in maybe 10 years, it could be very difficult to put, uh, to set as chess like uh, a compulsory subject. Uh, but I think that chess still belongs to school, actually, um, at least at like uh, after school activities. So I'm a teacher and I wouldn't, wouldn't be happy if somebody forced me to teach mm -hmm. it as a subject. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would be happy if all the children could play chess in the afternoon after school for fun, as a hobby. And if some teacher wants to teach it in the morning, uh, during uh, math lessons, okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I think in Czech Republic, it's not necessary to set it as a, it's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And all the effort, how to spread chess around the schools is focused on, mainly on after school activities. But we have uh, around 15 schools where the chess is a subject in the morning and they have it, uh, all the children, but uh, it's not the number one, not for me as a manager of chess and schools. Mm -hmm. What about the Slovakia? I have personal experience that I'm uh, uh, teaching kids uh, after schools, also during uh, the education time, but uh, for me, I would say that chess should be uh, prioritized for after schools. But the key question is maybe what uh, Judith said, that we should, be f we should know firstly 
uh, where sh should be the chess when we are talking to school if you want to there there or there because for me now it's not clear if ev everybody uh, for example in Slovakia uh, is sure that it should be for example more after schools mm -hmm. and Poland 45 seconds <laughs> answer yes but um, of course as Venetia mentioned uh, if we want to bring it to schools next week, it's just like um, deciding that we will do the Chess Olympiad uh, in Madrid uh, next month. Mm -hmm. uh, if we decide so, then uh, it will be total collapse and uh, for next 10 years not, no one will discuss with us any ideas for interesting chess projects. So to um, build a roadmap in, of course, in every country, because some countries are more developed, so, so we cannot say tomorrow everywhere in the world. But to have, uh, let's say, this perspective of four, six, ten, ten years to, to also show good examples city by city or region by region, some pilot uh, projects, so I think it's very uh, reasonable, um, reasonable goal. And every project is like a book. If you don't make the first step, you are still mm -hmm. on the first page. Mm -hmm. And how is the vision from Hungary? Well, I think it's a very sensitive question. This is maybe the biggest debate, even mm. within people who believe that chess belongs to, to education, mm. because this is something, uh, yeah, what, what to do, right? Optional or, or not optional. First of all, I think we have to decide whether we be believe that it has to be in school. Mm -hmm. If we do, there has to be a strategy as you said, that four years, five years, somehow to make plans that what do we need, how can we convince the authorities and the teachers and everybody else. And for sure, one of the part of that is to make research, to make very professional paper material, online material, films, with all those very beneficial effects what chess has in the classroom. So if people know that it is really like that, maybe in the first year it can be a pilot, and if it's so successful, then you can move on. But you have to give little liberty. At the same time, decisions are very important. And sometimes you have to make tough decisions and very committal decisions. And uh, we'll see in which country it's going to be the decision makers who are ready to take these. Mm -hmm. I guess that uh, a lot of our viewers are now thinking deeply and about, well, for instance, how can these successful four projects be replicated or adapted uh, to other countries? Or what about the challenges you have mentioned and so on? So I'm convinced that this debate has been really very inspiring for a lot of people. One million thanks to all four of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.